Was that it, Darren? Was that the slideshow? Did it break? <laughs> We've just got two slides this week. We have got just two slides this week, Mike. And this is what happens if we ask the church to exercise. <laughs> what, you mean nothing? <laughs> yeah. You remember a couple of weeks ago we had people eating their favourite food. We had hundreds of photos. So many. So many photos. And this week, guys, what have you done to us? <laughs> You've done nothing except... <laughs> Chris and Janet, who have a great personal cost, stood next to a sign. <laughs> Guys, I, I don't know whether to say I'm proud of you or I'm really shocked. <laughs> or ashamed? Are we going to go there? <laughs> We're not going to go there, Mike. Oh, uh, I noticed that neither you nor I sent any photos of us exercising. Yeah, this is true. I don't think we can stand from a place of judgment here. No. It's true. <laughs> okay, we're all sinners. <laughs> saved by the grace of god let's just like bring that in <laughs> exactly so folks i'm sorry this week's uh, slideshow didn't really work out obviously it's not so easy to take uh, selfies of yourselves while you're exercising which we don't doubt for a moment you were all exercising through the week so uh, this week we'll try and do something a bit simpler we thought maybe this time living in the forest of dean beautiful area how about let's get photos of ourselves and each other in nature I'd really, really like to see that. So just as Janet and Chris did, you know, get on out, go, go and see our beautiful Forest of Dean and just take a snapshot so we can see where you've been visiting during the forest. And of course, Mike, socially distancing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we want to see your faces. That's, you know, that's what the slideshows are about. You know, it's all very nice seeing uh, beautiful landscapes in the Forest of Dean. But really, we miss each other. We want to see you all. So please, let's see your faces. Definitely. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. It was so fun to see just the two of you there, but we'll be catching up with many more of you online as we go through the week. So, but it's really good to have you here this morning for our Sunday service. Welcome. Feel free to comment throughout the service in the comments box below, and we just look forward to interacting with you there. And if you'd like subtitles, please remember just to activate them on your Facebook account because we have set them for this service. We're going to uh, welcome uh, each other and just open our service in prayer now. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Father, thank you that you don't just save us each as individuals, but that you put us in a church, that you put us together, that your intention from the beginning was that we should be in community. And Father, we pray now that although we remain socially distant, although we're not gathering together in a building, will you help each of us please to be aware of all of the others? gathering in that great cloud of witnesses, each of us seeing you, but also encouraging all of the others. And Lord, bind us together, please, into the church that you want us to be. And this morning, please speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Well, we're going to start our service now with some sung worship with Rosie and the team. And we've got a bit of a change here this morning so i really really want you to pay attention rosie's bringing a new song for us here it's called thrive and some of you will have seen the email and announcement about it that we really want to encourage you to send in a recording of you singing this song and rosie's done a demo for you to sing along too which is great but um we're going to sing it as a, a, a fellowship now together and so take note Get everyone, the family singing along and uh, we'll send out some more details of how you can be involved in that. So Mike, we're a bit of a singing church, aren't we? Hmm. We really are. It's, it's something that we love doing. We love to worship our God through song. So we really encourage you to join us with that. And I think there was a few weeks ago that the UK did the blessing and then other countries did the blessing and they had all these faces on the screen and we love community like that. We'd love to do that together. So please be encouraged, sing along and then send in some videos to Lizzie and we'll put the details of how you can do that in the comments below. But let's just join together in sung worship now uh, for our Heavenly Father. Thanks, Rosie. Hi, everyone. 
I'm here to uh, explain Thrive. So um, you'll have all seen the UK blessing song that's been all over the internet. Um, and I really wanted to do a Forest Community Church take on that. Um, so I didn't want to do the blessing, I wanted to do our own song. Um, so I've picked Thrive by Casting Crowns because I love the lyrics. I love the ethos behind the song of how, you know, God wants the best for us. He wants us to thrive. Um, and so particularly during this, this strange time at the moment, um, I thought that'd be really appropriate. So I sent out an email and I popped a message on the members Facebook group uh, a few weeks back asking you to get involved and some of you have and it's fantastic. I'm really excited about it. We got some great videos in, um, but I would love for more of them. So um, if the any parts of the song are putting you off or you think it's a bit tricky, please just be encouraged to like maybe only just do part of it. So there's a um, bit that goes, whoa, which you could definitely do. Um, the chorus is quite easy. Um, and if you find the verse quite tricky, that's fine. Just don't sing it. Just, you know, bop along um, and, and hop back in when you get to a bit that you can sing. Don't worry about pitching it. You can sing it down an octave. Um, so if it's a bit high for you, that's fine. Just flip it down an octave. Um, but we'd love for you to get involved. Um, so I'm going to resend out the email and the message. I'm going to give you all another week to do it. Um, and please get involved. Have the whole family, your kids, and um, particularly the men. We haven't got so many guys. I think it's just Luke at the moment. Um, so give them some support. Um, and let's get some more videos in and just make this a really special Forest Community Church uh, song. So um, we're going to sing it now. This is just a concept video. Um, we'll make it uh, with more videos and more faces as we get them in. Um, but enjoy singing along for now. Thanks. Shine like a sun ray 
Rosie uh, and I hope lots of you uh, feel you can contribute to that you don't need to be a good singer you should, what does the Bible say make a joyful noise right Excellent. Yeah. so please as said earlier we want to hear your hear your faces see your faces we want to hear your voices as well mm -hmm. now later in this service we're gonna be having communion so if at any stage you feel that a Darren or I are just wittering on too long Take the moment to nip out into the kitchen, get some bread, get some wine, be ready for communion later on. Excellent. Look forward to sharing that with you all. Okay, so very exciting other thing that's happening today, Mike, is the long anticipated and awaited Open Gardens Showcase. I am really excited about this. I know Fiona is. How about you, Mike? Do you, do you get out in the garden much? I am, yeah. We've got a, an oak tree that's um, it's grown from a seedling and it's grown up too big near the house. So uh, I've sent in a little clip asking how we can move it because I, I don't want to kill it, but I also don't want it to destroy the house. So hopefully someone's got the answer. Excellent. Oh, so that's so great. It's been um, a few weeks now of us collecting submissions for our Forest Community Church expert panel and they've put everything together. They've showcased some gardens, answered some questions, given some tips and hints and some advice, and it will be available, it'll be streaming this afternoon at 3 p.m. on our Facebook page, and I just cannot wait to see that. So please tune in and just join in in the comments and, and, and have a great time with us as we look at our gardens. So through the month of July, we're running the gears. I hope you know about this because we've been going on about it quite a bit. So running several different gears. Gear one, if you're new to the church, uh, if you want to discover this church and how we think and feel about God, uh, that course will be perfect for you. So if you're not already on a course, contact Tim or Nikki. Uh, we'll put the addresses down in the comments. Then gear two is discovering spiritual maturity. And bizarrely, I'm going to be teaching that one. Um, and that's going to be Mondays at 7.30, uh, starting actually tomorrow. We're going to go to 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. And again, if you're not already on a course, and if you want to do that one, drop me a line. My email address will be in the comments. And gear three is discovering your spiritual gifts. Uh, John and Rosie will be running that. That'll be running on Friday evenings. Again, email addresses in the comments. Get in touch with them if you're not already on a course. Brilliant. And also gear four, which is discovering your life's mission, won't be running. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is, that's okay. Basically what it is, is we want people to do all these gears in the right order. It's the best way to do them because they build upon the learning from the last one. And as you mature, as you grow in your faith, each one starts to really impact in your life and make a difference. And gear four brings all of those stages together and just kind of culminates in a, a kind of a, a moment where you go oh okay this is where we're going this is what my life mission is with all those stages in place and it's fine because we've got everyone moving through the church and moving through the gears and they um just haven't got to stage four yet so when we've got more people who who can join us on stage four we will run it then so we're really looking forward to people completing their stages and then moving on to stage four and running that at a later point in the year. So don't worry, it is there, but we'll just have it at another time. So and what then, do we have now? Sorry, Mike? What do we have now? 
Oh, we do. We're moving on now to a time of prayer where Nikki's going to join us with Moira and Luke, and we can just share in worshipping our God through prayer. Thank you, guys. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with hearts that are thankful. Thankful, Lord, that you are faithful to each one of us. That is who you are. That is your very nature. And we thank you, Lord, that your faithfulness is a constant. Lord, thank you that you keep all your promises. That you're there for us to pick us up when our faith might be shaken when we ourselves might feel faithless. Forgive us, Lord, when we sometimes struggle to remain faithful to you, faithful to each other. Lord God, help us to grow that fruit of faithfulness in our lives. Lord, it's your faithfulness that's our inspiration. And that's what we need to remain faithful. Lord, great is your faithfulness. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. As 2 Timothy 2 tells us, we thank you, Lord, that you tell us if we are faithless, you remain faithful because you cannot deny yourself. And that's just a wonderful promise, a, a, a wonderful promise of hope that we can rest in, that we can lean on. Thank you, thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to us and help us to grow that in our lives. Amen. I pray for those who have been affected by the coronavirus, Lord. Especially those who have lost loved ones. We ask for your peace and your comfort over them at this time. And not only those who have lost loved ones, Lord, but also those who've lost their jobs and are struggling financially and because of that Lord are struggling with mental health as well so we also pray for people suffering with anxiety with depression and all other types of mental health and we tell them to be gone in the name and power of Jesus. They, that none of them have any power over them. So again, we say to the mental health, be gone in Jesus' name. To anxiety, be gone in Jesus' name. And instead be replaced by peace and love and joy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm going to read Psalm 131. God is kind. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Go ahead, praise the Lord, all you loving servants of God. Keep it up. Praise him some more, for the glorious name of the Lord is blessed forever and ever. From sun, sunrise brilliance to sunset beauty, lift up his praise from dawn to dusk, for he rules on high over the nations with a glory that outshines even the heavens. No one can compare to God enthroned on high. He stoops down to look upon the sky and the earth. He promotes the poor, picking them up from the dirt, and rescues the needy from the, gar from the garbage dump. He turns paupers into princes and seats them on the royal throne of honour. God's grace provides for the barren ones a joyful home with children, so that every childless couple finds a family. He makes them happy parents, surrounded by their pride and joy. That's the God we praise. So give it all to him. 
Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your that you are so good, that you are filled with compassion for each one of your children. And Lord, today I just want to lift up the many, many people who are struggling at this time, struggling with illness, struggling with um, loss of job, loss of self-esteem, afraid to go out, maybe lost a loved one. Father, you know each one. You know what they need. I just pray that you will just reach into them today. Bless them in a real special way, Father, as you just minister to them. Help us, Father, through your Holy Spirit. Prompt us to who we need to go and um, just talk to about you. Bring you into their situation, Father. Thank you for the privilege of intercessionary prayer that we can bring our brothers and sisters before you and people that we don't know, Lord, but you know them. So, Father, I just thank you. Thank you for the huge privilege it is to sit in your presence and just talk and listen to you. Praise you and honour you, Father. Amen. Well, thank you, folks, for praying with us. Uh, now we're going to take a, a few minutes for the kids' spot. We're going to show you the new episode of Fruity Tales, a completely novel artistic thing which is not infringing anyone else's intellectual property. Uh, so let's see whether this week you can spot who the narrator is. This is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus lives in Jericho. Zacchaeus works as a chief tax collector for the hated Romans and was very rich. The Romans look down on the Jews and the Jewish people feel that Zacchaeus is working for the enemy as a tax collector. Other people expect him to be corrupt and a cheat with money. One day Jesus was visiting Jericho and made his way through the town. Zacchaeus wanted to try and get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead of Jesus and climbed into the sycamore fig tree by the road. There he waited for Jesus to pass by. When Jesus came nearby, he looked up at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down quickly. I must be a guest in your house today. Zacchaeus was shocked. How did Jesus know his name or know where he was hidden among the foliage? Zacchaeus quickly climbed down in great joy and excitement and Jesus followed him to the house. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. They muttered and grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus hosted Jesus in his home and he felt convicted by the grace Jesus had shown by choosing the dine with him. He stood before the Lord and said, Lord, thank you for your kindness and grace. I have done wrong in the past, but now I want to do right. I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus smiled. Salvation has come to the home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to find lost people and save them. There is always a second chance with your Father in heaven, and you have chosen the good choice. Well, that was a great Fruity Tales this week. Thank you so much. And yes, Mike, I think I did recognise those subtle forest dulcet tones. And that would be our very own Dave Meek. Thank you so much, Dave, for narrating there for us. It's really good to hear your voice. So uh, we've come to that part of our service where we have Paige come in and do an interview. And this week, she's gone back to looking at the charities and mission groups that we support financially as a church. 
And this week we're going to hear from Andrew and Lorna Burt. And it's really, really fantastic because some of these are, are less well known to us. And it's good that we can hear from their very own words about the ministries that they're carrying out in the places where they are and just how uh, God is releasing them uh, to build his kingdom. So thank you very much, Paige. Good morning, church. It's great to be here with you on this Sunday morning service. My name is Paige, as you probably all know. And over the weeks, we have been chatting to people who have been involved in the organisations or the projects that we as a church support, both prayerfully and financially. And this week, we have Andrew and Lorna Burt with us today. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Nice to be How here. You? Lovely to have we're all, you. We're all well. well. Thank you. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Oh, that's great. So, would you mind telling us a little bit about who you are and then we'll find out what you do in a moment. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you who we are. Um, yep. My name is Lorna and that Hello. is Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have two children, uh, Neve who's 17 and Kerry who will be 16 in July. Mm -hmm. And we are from Scotland, but we've been living in Ireland for since 1999. Yep. Uh, we came to Enniscorthy. Mm -hmm. in the southeast of um, Ireland to work with another couple. Um, we came, we did the GLOW course eh, for one year yep. and then we came down to work with eh, another couple here doing outreach um, in Enniscorthy. Lovely. So as I said, we as a church, we help support you monthly. What is it that we release you to do for the kingdom of God? What is your ministry now in, in I'm going to try and pronounce this, Enniscorthy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, our ministry just now is we we are the leaders of a small church, yep. so, uh, and we are trying to support these mainly new Christians uh, who are first generation Christians, mm -hmm. uh, mainly from a, a Catholic background. Yep. So they are coming from uh, some of them from very broken situations from a lot of hearts so we're trying to support them and encourage them and help them to grow in their faith in the Lord Jesus and know that he's with them and can encourage them uh, through all the difficulties that they face so we have that the, the ministry of, of looking after and supporting and teaching and discipling uh, our church and as well as that trying to reach out to our community mm -hmm. uh, and we we do that well before the the coronavirus pandemic, yep. we we were doing that through a lot of, of kids work and youth work, yep. uh, youth ministry, and also Lorna would was involved in a lot of ladies ministry and yep. a lot of uh, visitation, and and those kind of outreach events that we can just connect with our community and share the wonderful message of the gospel. So that's what we're we're all about is to try to share the the, the news of Jesus, the good news of Jesus, the, the offer of salvation through through his amazing grace eh, to share that with people and let people come into that that personal relationship with God through faith in Christ. What kind of challenges has coronavirus thrown up for you in the past few months? Because all churches <laughs> are battling with it at the moment. Um, yes. Uh, I think the main challenge that many people have had is in our church, we have a number of people who are uh, from very broken situations, mm -hmm. uh, history of child abuse, broken marriages, and, and mental health difficulties. Mm -hmm. And those people, because they have lost that, that, that regular connection, that structure, that support network, uh, that has broken down. And, and for a number of times, they were isolated in their homes. Mm -hmm. that, that was very difficult. They were very difficult times. So Lauren and I have been very busy trying to connect and support uh, the people just through that uh, through trying to cope with their, their mental health struggles to encourage them that god is with them through these difficult times that he can help them through that that, that his grace is sufficient for them even in this unusual unique time so so that's been the kind of the, the focus of this time it's kind of stopped our all of our kind of organized outreaches you know like yep. our, our youth clubs and our kids clubs and our and our events uh, but that that space has been kind of taken up with caring for people and supporting people Lauren has also been doing some practical work trying to go shopping for people drop yep. in medication for people that kind of of of, of things uh, so so just caring for people really has been the biggest challenge to try and help people get through this this very difficult time for them 
what great work you do guys i know you know running a church is full time and then some i feel so thank you <laughs> so much a for what you do and b for finding the time to come and chat to us and to let us at forest community church know a little bit about yourselves so you're in our prayer diary there's a day when we open up the page and you will be there um, as one of the, the groups of people to be prayed for so now we know a little bit more about you, we can target our prayers a little bit more efficiently. Thank you. So, thank and you, thank you so much for your support of us. We really do appreciate it, uh, both financially and in prayer. We really appreciate your your support. And, it's what and family does for each other. Oh, bless you. Have a lovely day, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Bye. Well, thanks, Paige. I really appreciate um, having a, a better sense of who all these various people are that we support as a church. Well, Rosie now is going to lead us in worship, and then we're going to go from that straight into communion, which uh, we'll get Paige back to lead us in communion. Uh, so if you've not got your bread and wine yet, just sneak out during the song. I'm sure Rosie won't mind. <laughs>
Hi Church. We come together monthly as a church to share in communion. And this is a time of looking back over what Jesus has done for us by his redemptive act on the cross. And in the same way that the Jews would celebrate the Passover in remembrance of their deliverance from the Pharaoh by the blood of a perfect lamb daubed across their doorways, so do we share bread and wine to remember how Jesus gave his flesh and his blood as a sacrifice once and for all for us. His perfect sacrifice traded our sin and shame for Jesus's perfection and right standing with God. And because of that, our relationship to our Heavenly Father is restored and we can enter into his presence and draw close to his throne and know the Father's personal love for us. This is what Jesus achieved and secured for us when, as we read in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And as we take and share of this bread now together as a church, I just encourage you to think on the phenomenal price Jesus paid to restore you to the Father, and what agony and suffering he endured for you, his beloved. I'm just going to share the bread now. We then read, then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to him, them, the disciples, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This time, as we follow Jesus's instructions and share in this wine or juice together, I'd encourage you to think on the following verse that we then read in scripture. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Communion is not only a reminder of God's great acts in the past, but it is a promise for the future too. The final cup of the fruit of the vine that Jesus refers to is the cup of praise to be drank at the wedding banquet in heaven. So communion isn't just about coming out of sin but it's going into true, right, original Garden of Eden relationship with God. So as we take of this cup and we share together, be encouraged of the glorious promise of the future existence with the Father and right relationship with him. And let us worship him with doubly grateful hearts this communion. What a saviour we have in Jesus. Amen. Oh, thanks, Paige, and everyone on screen there for just taking us through communion. It's really great to be able to still share in communion with you. And I really encourage you to do that in your home groups as well. It's a really precious meal that we can have together, remembering uh, the great sacrifice for each one of us. Okay, so now we're going to go join Tim for our message this morning. And some of you might recognize where Tim is. Have a look. Well, as you can probably uh, guess, I'm speaking here this morning from inside our church uh, in Cinderford. And it seems really strange. It's the first time I've actually spoken uh, and brought a message uh, for the last, since uh, over three months ago. Incredible. And um, it's lovely to be back here and we hope uh, in the not too long and distant future we will be able to uh, come together in this place and uh, as, a, as a church fellowship. But you know it's uh, 23rd of March Boris Johnson announced the lockdown and here we are 111 days later and uh, we're starting to come out of that lockdown uh, very cautiously and um, uh, carefully. Um, but we're starting to move forward 
And it, of course, it raises a whole lot of questions for us, doesn't it? You know, how do we move forward as individuals? How do we move forward um, as a church? Uh, what, what does it look like? And the wonderful thing about the Bible is it gives us so many examples uh, of, of people, of groups, of even whole nations who have been under pressure um, and uh, all sorts of um, different scenarios which have been tough to deal with and uh, really have weighed heavily upon them. And we can learn from these examples and we can see how people, uh, men and women of faith in the past, have, have coped and dealt with these, uh, the, the kind of pressures that you and I have been feeling these last few months. Uh, and we can learn from them and we can take their, their good things and we can learn from their bad things, things that didn't work, uh, and, and try to feed them into our lives. So that's what we're going to be doing over these next few weeks, just learning from what the Bible says, the wisdom that God has for us there. And particularly today, we're going to be thinking about um, uh, moving forward and how the very first followers of Jesus moved forward. They had the euphoria of Jesus rising from the dead, seeing him in the flesh, knowing that he was alive, him going up to heaven, the Holy Spirit had been poured upon them, empowering them to live new lives. And then uh, people come into faith in their thousands as more and more people uh, joined them and wanted to experience the joy of, 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 the, of knowing Jesus and having the power of his spirit at work in their lives. But then, of course, it created opposition and people didn't, wasn't universally welcomed. And um, some of those in authority in particular started to persecute them. And, uh, you know, what was their response? Well, there's three things, three things I think we can take from the response and as we read through the book of Acts, which are particularly pertinent to us today. And the first thing is that they acknowledged the pain of their loss. Secondly, they prioritised prayer. And thirdly, they took the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus with everyone they met. So they acknowledged the pain of their loss. And in Acts chapter 8, we read about the very first Christian who was martyred. He was brutally murdered, Stephen. And he was one of their brightest and best young men. And uh, there's a little verse there in Acts chapter 8, verse 2, and it says these words, after he died and uh, was stoned to death, and it says this, some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning. You see, they were, <laughs> yes, Stephen, there must have been so many questions that were raised. You know, why, why him, Lord? How come him? He was our, one of our best. And they came and they, they just mourned and they wept over seeing the situation develop. And I'm sure it must have broken their hearts at the loss that they experienced. One of their much loved brothers in the faith. And so they, and the Bible acknowledges that. And I think it's important for us, you know, some of you, uh, as you're watching this, you've been through bereavement during these last 111 days. And you know people, or you have close relatives or family or friends, so you know who have lost their lives, perhaps through COVID-19, maybe through other causes. And there's that sense of loss. And it's important to acknowledge it. Perhaps for others, it's more the loss of human interaction, the loss of uh, being able to meet friend up with friends and uh, just to shake their hand or give them a hug or whatever it is that is appropriate for you to do. And there's a real sense of loss because you haven't been able to do this. I know it's something I, I, I felt quite acutely personally. And um, perhaps for others, it's the, the, the loss. Uh, there's no workplace interaction. You're either working from home or maybe you're furloughed and not being able to work. And there's that pain and that loss there. Oh, there's redundancy, which is horrendous. And the sense, will I get a job again? The loss. Brothers, you've got businesses and you're struggling in your businesses financially. And there's that loss of revenue and income and uncertainty. And it's important to acknowledge the loss because it's real and it's painful. And of course, we know that God sees and God cares and God feels your pain and he understands. He knows what it is like to have loss. His son uh, came to this earth and he, uh, God gave up his son for us and he gave his life on that cross. There was that fullest of losses, sacrificial loss, um, so that we might know forgiveness of sins and hope. And to know that 
our God loves us and he's done something about the separation so that we could come back to, uh, to him in relationship. And so acknowledge your, the pain of your loss if that's you this morning. But then secondly, we see that they prioritise prayer. And um, it's a feature of those first Christians uh, as you read through the book of Acts, uh, especially when they were under pressure. You know, in Acts chapter uh, 4, um, the very first time there was really serious opposition, Peter and John were arrested and they were told not to preach anymore um, because uh, after being beaten and everything else, um, because worse would happen. And um, they, w when they came back uh, to the, the group of uh, other followers of Jesus in Acts 4, 24 uh, and 5, it says that they lifted their voices together in prayer. That's what they did. You know, there were a whole gang of them together in that place. And what did they do? They prayed. And they poured out their hearts together in prayer to God. Again, in Acts chapter 12, verse 12, um, you know, this time James, one of the, uh, Jesus' uh, first disciples, brother of John, had been executed because of his faith in Jesus and because of his, his preaching. And um, Peter had been arrested too, and the expectation was the next day he would perhaps uh, lose his life as well. And miraculously, God sent an angel, and the angel released him from prison. And Peter went to the house where he knew many of the believers would be meeting, and it says, and they were praying. And I find it quite encouraging because Rhoda, the servant who um, heard him knocking at the door, she didn't open it initially and let him in. And she recognised his voice. She went back in and told the rest, Peter's at the door. And they said, no, you're right of your mind. <laughs> Ridiculous. No, he's in prison. He's waiting execution. She said, no, he's definitely at the door. And eventually they let him in. And um, yeah, you can imagine the excitement uh, as they suddenly saw Peter in the flesh in front of them. Their faith wasn't that big and that strong, but they were still praying. And God came through for them. And so prayer undergirded everything that they did and it's fascinating isn't it um during this time of lockdown how um right at the beginning especially google reported that the uh, requests for or this in the search engine for google for prayer skyrocketed as there was that instinctive reaction from people all over the uk pray how do we pray what do, and they started searching for it and that's a great thing that's that you know i think god's put that within us that natural um, uh, response that we would uh, we would do, and um, that's a that's a healthy thing, and so um, there's that natural inclination to pray, uh, but, um, but we shouldn't just pray when it's things are going tough. We should pray uh, at all times, and and maybe this morning you're one of these people going, yeah, I know I should pray more. I don't actually know how to pray, and let me just encourage you, you know, start with the Lord's prayer, as we would call it in in Matthew uh, chapter. Uh, 6 and 9 to 13 you know jesus said um told his disciples you know pray like this our father who is in heaven may your name be holy um uh, and and so th there's a prayer which we can just pray and uh, that can be a blessing to us so uh, pray that prayer and uh, as you pray that prayer it will lead you into other prayers as you respond to god from your heart uh, another great prayer which uh, i think is a fantastic if you want to pray a blessing on someone ephesians chapter 3 verses 16 to 21 you know paul's prayer uh, for the church in in ephesus uh, pray that uh, ephesus 3 16 prayer uh, and bless people you know let me encourage you to carve out time each day as mike suggested last week maybe as you're going for a walk uh, perhaps you're taking your dog for a walk in the morning and the evening or whatever pray as you go along pray just give thanks to god for what you see around you and just share with him what's on your heart perhaps as you're driving uh, around pray um, especially if you're not in too much traffic um, or, or just sit in, in your chair at home with a cup of coffee in your hand or a cup of tea or whatever it is and um, especially when you start the day off with and just bring your day to the lord and pray you know really important things ways to prioritize prayer but also another way i would really encourage you and that is to to join us because uh, each week as a, as a church we realize the importance of 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 um uh intensifying our prayer and we don't just pray in our in our home groups and uh, don't just pray individually uh, but we've we've started up these two new prayer times each week on a tuesday morning 7 15 and uh, thursday morning at a quarter to nine in the morning and um you know we'd love you to join us you know you don't have to feel spiritual to join you know, if you just recognize that you want to join with other people and and pray and that's what we do we just pray and a lot of the time it's just 
we don't chat, we don't discuss what we're going to pray particularly, we just have a, a, sh- a scripture and then we pray and we spend time together and these are really special times, you know, there there are delights and we just, there's a sense that we're in God's presence and I always come out of it feeling so encouraged and so enriched and so blessed and, um, you know, we'd love you to join us uh, for some of those. So if you haven't and, uh, you know, just... Um, Join us on the Zoom call if you're in the church. If you're uh, I'm aware that some people watch this from other churches, join your church prayer meeting. Or if you haven't got a prayer meeting like that, get two or three friends together on Zoom or whatever, and just have a, a, a just a short prayer time together. It's it's amazing. And uh, if you're if you haven't got a church group uh, and you wanted to connect with us, just drop me an email. Just share uh, your experience and how you want to connect with us in prayer, and we'll make sure you get the relevant links so that you can uh, be part. And 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 because there is something special joining together, other other people are on that journey of faith together. So um, take the opportunity, pray, prioritize prayer. But then lastly, take the opportunity to share. Take the opportunity to share. You know, there's an openness, an openness to knowing uh, about Jesus. You know, it's interesting in Acts uh, chapter 8, uh, after Stephen's death, you think that the church will be a little bit traumatized. You think that they would perhaps go a bit silent and hold back from sharing anymore because, you know, I could be the next one. I could be the next one to lose my life. But what happened? Well, they were frightened. <laughs> they were human. <laughs> and uh, the Bible tells us that they were scattered. They actually they, they were fearful for their lives and they moved and they went up into all sorts of uh, f- countries and places further afield from where they were living. Uh, but yet it says also, wherever they went, they preached the good news about Jesus. You see, wherever they went, they preached the good news about Jesus. You see, they, they just couldn't help but share it. You see, we have good news. It's the best news ever. And the world is looking for good news. The world is looking for certainty when all it sees around it is uncertainty. The world is looking for hope when it feels so hopeless. The world is looking for peace when everything is so unsettled. The world is looking for reassurance from someone who is trustworthy. And do you know what? In Jesus, we find someone who brings certainty. In Jesus, we find someone who brings hope. And in Jesus, we find someone who brings peace and so much more. And so we have the news that the world is wanting. And so we can be those um, uh, vehicles that uh, can bring that fantastic news to our world. So we've got to take it. And it could be wherever, uh, wherever we are. You know, um, this, only this last week I um, met up with someone on Zoom I'd never met before from down south, a, a young man, and he shared a little bit of his, his, his story with me, how as a builder, uh, he said, look, if you'd have met me several years ago, every other word would have been a swear word, and uh, it, you know, um, I would be speaking a completely different way. And yet he said, I, my first child was born, and I found myself one day looking out the window and just thinking, I don't want to bring my child up in this horrible world. I see so much brokenness, I see so much pain, I see so much sadness, I see so much hurt. And I just can't bear the thought of bringing my child up in this world. And so he contacted a friend of his who was a a Christian, a Christ follower, and uh, he didn't quite realize much about that at the time, but he just contacted him and they started chatting. And he said one night they stayed up to two o'clock in the morning and his friend just introduced him to Jesus. And he said the difference it's made in his life is absolutely unbelievable. He said it's chalk and cheese. He now has a completely different outlook on life. Now he's thrilled to bring his son up because he knows his son can have the the same joy and the same purpose and the same um, uh, hope that he has found in Jesus too. He said, my son's, you know, he's, he's a, several years old now and uh, he's excited about Jesus uh, in the same way as I'm excited about Jesus. And I can't, he said, I can't help but just want to tell everyone about Jesus because he's changed my life. You see, the gospel is good news. Jesus is good news. And maybe for some of you listening today, that's you. you you're like that young man. You're reaching out, trying to make sense of life. And I, let me encourage you to take that step of faith and 
put your faith and trust in Jesus today. Reach out to him and just ask him to come into your life and uh, to become uh, your saviour and to, um, to know that you can have him forgive you for all the past, all the sins, and to know that he will go with you and lead you through the future every step of the way and to walk this new life together and with him and he will place his spirit within you to empower you to live in a different way you know let me invite you to do that and i'm going to pray a prayer at the end which may help you in that journey but also maybe for others uh, you know, that young man could be your work colleague he could be your neighbor could be your friend could be your um, family member and just take the opportunities that come your way to share this good news with your neighbours, your work colleagues, your friends. So I love, um, right at the, in that book of, uh, book of Acts in chapter 4, after Peter and John have been arrested, and it says that they met together for prayer. Let me just read out what they actually prayed together, because it's actually quite surprising. And in Acts chapter 4, and verse 29, uh, it says these words, and now, O Lord, hear their threats, because people were threatening them. And give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And then it says these words. And after that prayer, the meeting place shook. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. You see, notice what they didn't pray for. They didn't pray for safety. They didn't pray for comfort. They didn't pray for protection. They prayed for boldness and they prayed for power. Let me encourage you to pray for boldness and pray for power so that your friends and your colleagues and your neighbours might experience the joy of knowing Jesus too. Let's just pray as I close. Father, we thank you that as we move out of lockdown, we have these examples from history of people who've been through great times of intensity and difficulties and struggles and how other followers of Jesus have found strength and help and hope. And Lord, today we acknowledge our pain and our loss. Some have lost so much. And Lord, we acknowledge it before you publicly today. Lord, we thank you that you feel the pain. And Lord, help us too as we move forward to prioritise prayer. Lord, we know that as we pray, we invite you into our lives, into our situation. The God who of, of the universe, the one who made us. And you're able to work and move in ways we could never imagine. That we could never do. Lord, help us to prioritise prayer. And to grow in our relationship with you in this way. And help us take this opportunity to share this good news of Jesus with all, the, all those who we know and those who we meet. And Lord, I pray particularly today for those who are joining, who just want to reach out in faith for the first time. And reach out and, and be able to say, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus. Yes, I'm, I, I'm, I'm his. And Lord, I pray for them. And Lord, I, I pray that they might just have that courage and that strength just to reach out and trust you trust you with their hearts trust you with their lives and as they do well i know they'll find you fully trustworthy lord thank you that you hear those prayers of faith and you respond lord just take us we pray in your name bless us and use us we ask amen so if you responded and want to know more if maybe you stepped out in faith today for the first time please just drop me a message um, tim at fcchurch.co.uk and uh, i'd love to connect with you and encourage you uh, and, and pray for you in, in your journey of faith as you move forward so we're going to close with our last song and so over to our, our music worship team now thank you
Tim for bringing the message this morning and thank you to Rosie and the team there for leading us in sung worship and it's been a really uh, great service to just hear more from God's word to pray together to worship together and we're just really grateful that we have this online space that we can still share with one another and have community we're just going to close our service now in prayer thanks Mike yeah father thank you that you are with us in every circumstance and we think about everything that people in the Bible went through and the desperate situations they found themselves in and compared with some of those uh, the continuing lockdown seems relatively mild and yet we feel it because it's the situation we're in now and we thank you that in that situation or any other you are with us that's the promise of your word that you're with us even to the ends of the earth our Father, help us please to live like people who know that, to spread your grace wherever we are, whoever we're with, to convey something of who you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. And just a, a quick reminder, everyone, this afternoon, 3 p.m. on our Facebook page, we have our Open Gardens Showcase. We really hope you can join us then. Uh, and before then, of course, don't forget you can join us for coffee and a chat at 12 o'clock. Um, if you don't have the link already, drop Tim a line and he can send it to you. Look forward to seeing you all there, everyone. And we hope that you have a great week and we look forward to connecting with you again next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye now.